What's going on guys? I'm Nick the Tutor and I've helped thousands of students prepare for tests like the digital SAT and the ACT and today I'm going to be doing a video that is going to show you a plan to prepare for the SAT in two months. Say you're taking the August SAT, you're preparing over the summer. This is going to be a perfect video to show you guys exactly what you should do week by week to prepare for the test. So let's get into it. So the SAT right now has two main sections. You have math and English and both sections are scored of 800. Each section has two modules and the test is adaptive. So after module one, the test grades you and either feeds you a harder or easier module two, depending on your performance. So fact number one is it's very important for any student trying to score over 1200 of the digital SAT that you do well on module one. So tip number one is for your prep. You want to make sure that you're prepared for module one and you're able to do well enough on it to get to that more difficult module two. That's kind of a general principle of preparing for the SAT. I want to make sure you guys understand that because that's so important to getting over 1200. Now let's get into some specific strategies if we had eight weeks to prepare for the test. So what I would do at the start is I would take a diagnostic test. You can do this on the blue book. You can do this on our SAT testing app. I'll drop the link in that below if you want to check that out and you wanna take a test to see where you stand. You wanna see if you moved to the hard module. Now, if you're doing the blue book, they're not gonna tell you that, but if you scored 1100 or below, you probably moved to the easy module. And if you scored around 1200 or above, you probably did move to the hard module. So you're set to really improve your score a lot if you continue to get more answers correct. Now let's get into exactly what you should do to repair. So we have eight weeks. The first thing you wanna do after taking your diagnostic test is create a study schedule. So if I scored, say a 1200, my diagnostic test and my goal is to get to 1400 I want to make a study schedule of studying practice problems and practice tests to make sure that I'm successful I would love to see a student take at least four practice SATs before they take the real test so if you space them out every two weeks you should be able to get in those four practice tests by the time you take the exam so let's talk about month one month one we took our diagnostic test we're going to review that in week one. So week one is going to be a review of the diagnostic test. And then what you also want to do is start studying the concepts on the exam. So you want to start studying grammar rules, math formulas, and strategies to make sure that you're prepared to take the test and improve your performance going forward. That's the base. The strategies and the basic content of the exam are the base of any student's SAT score. If you lack strategy and you lack an understanding of basic principles of math, like factoring, geometry rules, so on and so forth, it's gonna be very hard to improve your score. So week one, diagnostic test and review. Week two, study the concepts, study the strategies, take more practice problems and try to implement those strategies. Now your next question is like, where do I get this information? How do I know the strategies? How do I know the rules, right? You can learn that stuff online. You can obviously check out YouTube videos. I'll put a link in the description below of a strategy video I did for the digital SAT but also there are plenty of books and things that you can purchase for a very low cost that can help you. Our book is 100% strategy based. I'll put the link for the book below. It's under $30 and can actually help you learn all of the strategies for every question type. So you definitely wanna find something like that, whether it be YouTube, whether it be a book, to make sure you understand the strategy. All right, for week three and week four, I want you to focus on specific subject areas. So we wanna hyper focus on what we don't know. So say in the math category, there's a bunch of questions we got wrong. We wanna make sure to review those questions in week three, focus our time entirely on math, do follow-up problems, make sure to practice all of those math rules and concepts. The most important thing is that you do problems and that you review them. If you just do the problems and you don't review them, that's not as helpful. If you just review concepts and you don't do problems, that's also not as helpful. So we need to do both. Week four, I want you to focus on English and do the same thing. Do practice problems, review them, learn the concepts you don't know, and repeat this process incessantly until you feel like you're prepared for the test. Now at this point, you're probably ready to take another diagnostic test. So week four, I would take another diagnostic test. Now I wanted to give you guys a few weeks to study, prepare yourself, and do practice problems before you did that, but now you should see some improvements. So at the end of week four, take a diagnostic test, and see how you do. Hopefully you improved. If you move to that hard module, that's great. If you didn't, you know exactly where you need to improve. Now, that's why the diagnostic test is so important because it shows you your weaknesses and your strengths and lets you hyper focus on what you need to know. Now, where can you do this practice? Well, you can use Khan Academy. There's plenty of apps that you can get online or on your phone to do preparation. 
I would always recommend using either the real SAT questions or a well-made third-party app like our testing app has 10 tests in it, also has hundreds of follow-up problems. So if you could find something like that or use the blue book, you could do that second diagnostic test and grade yourself and see where you stand. Now, for weeks five through eight, we wanna repeat this process, but we want more frequent diagnostic tests. Now you understand the strategies. Now you know what you're doing. Make sure to test yourself every week, every other week. So if you can test yourself every week, you'll be able to get in three or four more practice tests before the real SAT. And if you test yourself, say every other week, you'll be able to get in one or two more practice tests before the real SAT. So the goal being you've taken four or five SATs before you go take the real SAT, and that will have you very prepared for the day of the test, the timing, the environment, all that good stuff. Now let's talk about actually taking the test. So let's go over some test day tips. So you did this prep cycle, right? You reviewed the strategies and the content at the beginning. You started doing practice questions. You reviewed those. You did practice tests and you review those. You feel very prepared for the test and you wanna succeed on the day of the test. What do we gotta do? Well, number one, you need to be well rested. You wanna make sure to get a good night's sleep before the exam. You've been studying for eight weeks, so you're probably gonna be a little bit tired and burnt out. We wanna make sure that we're not burnt out on the day of the test, so getting a good night's nice rest is essential. You wanna make sure you have all your documentation, your ID, that you're fully registered for the test. There's no issues there. You also wanna bring a snack and a water. Hopefully they'll let you eat during the break. Keep that energy up. These tests are kind of long. You know, the digital SAT is over two hours long. So you wanna make sure that you're, you know, you're well rested, you're well fed, and that you're not you know, hungry during the test where you're losing energy and you're petering out at the end of the exam. Lastly, you wanna stay calm and confident. The big thing about preparing for the test is it should give you confidence on the day of the test. There should be no unexpected questions, right? If you prepared for the test and you did five practice tests, you're not going to be shocked by anything on the digital SAT. If you are, maybe only one or two questions might be a little left field, and that's fine, right? We don't have to get every single question right even to get over 1500. So the main thing is you use your preparation as a confidence builder so you feel prepared going into the test, you feel ready, and you're excited about taking it hopefully a little bit, but you feel ready, right? You're prepared, you're confident, and you're ready to get this over with and dominate the test. If you have any questions about preparing for the digital SAT, you have any questions about specific questions on the digital SAT, throw them in the comments below. I'm happy to help you guys. I'll answer every single question you guys put forward because I wanna help you prepare for this test. Now, if you feel like you need a boost for the exam, check out the link to my course and my book below. We'll put a discount code in the description of this video so you guys can get a little bit of a break on the price there as well. We want you to do well on this test. We want you to succeed, so definitely check that out. Lastly, remember, the key to preparing for any standardized test is repetitive practice and review. If you can do questions, review them, and implement strategies, you will definitely be successful on a test like a digital SAT. So go out there and kill it. I'll see you guys in the next one.